The judgment scene is one that appears repeatedly in the Bible in various forms, especially in the apocalyptic or end time prophecies in the Bible. Often it's a subject that people don't like to talk about because it brings a certain form of pressure with there being only two probable outcomes. Those who have given their lives to Jesus though have no reason to fear, for in the judgment Jesus is both our advocate, our witness and our judge. In chapter 28 we see the judgment expounded upon along with the various books in the judgment that the Bible mentions. The great controversy between good and evil will ultimately be played out with a verdict pronounced from the heavenly courtroom and Satan vanquished and defeated. In the service that took place in the earthly sanctuary, sometimes referred to as the typical service, the Day of Atonement was a solemn day for all those who sometime in the previous year had confessed their sins in the sanctuary. The solemnity of the day then was reserved for those who were in the system, so to speak. Those who did not believe in God, who were outside of Israel, it was just another day. So the Day of Atonement that takes place in heaven will look at the cases of the professed people of God, those who claim to be followers of Jesus. There is a completely separate judgment reserved for the wicked. The Bible mentions various books in heaven that will determine the outcome of the judgment. Daniel 7 clearly says that the judgment was set and the books were opened. Revelation 20 verse 12 talks about the book of life. Philippians 4 verse 3 talks about having our names in the book of life. And Daniel 12 verse 1 says all will be delivered whose names are written in the book of life. This book of life is clearly mentioned it, and we need to pray earnestly that our names are written there. The Bible also talks about a book of remembrance that inscribes and immortalizes all the good and righteous deeds of mankind. Malachi 3 verse 16 and Nehemiah 13 verse 14 talk about the importance of this book and having our names written there. All who have truly repented of sin and by faith claimed the blood of Jesus will have pardoned entered next to their names in the books of heaven. Isaiah 43 verse 25 says, I, even I, who blots out your transgressions for my own sake will remember your sins no more. Just like in an earthly court scene when there's a high profile person, everyone is interested to know the outcome, so there is much interest in heaven to see who is worthy. All the while in the judgment, Satan is trying to accuse humanity and claim them as his own. Jesus doesn't excuse their sin, but shows where they had penitence, where they asked for forgiveness and why they are worthy to spend eternity with him. This work of judgment will take place prior to the return of Jesus and any sins that are not repented and forsaken will not be pardoned or blotted out. We may conceal our sins from our earthly family or friends, but nothing escapes the knowledge of the Eternal One. Man may deceive other men, but God looks not on the outward like man does. He looks at the heart. Every day our thoughts, our words, our actions, our intentions and our motives are recorded with unerring accuracy as our characters are faithfully delineated in the books of heaven. God will not just look on what we have done, said or thought in the judgment, but he will look on the use we have made on the talents he has given to us, our time, our voice, our money and our influence. How have we treated the poor and the suffering, the widows, the orphans and those less fortunate than us? In Matthew 25 it says, Inasmuch as you have done it to the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. Just like in ancient Israel, they searched their hearts on the Day of Atonement, so today we also ought to search our hearts. We are not saved in groups, but we're saved individually. And let us remember the words of Mark 13 verse 35, which says, Watch ye therefore.